Chapter 1. We have less time and you can blame modern society. Most of us have a far better life than years ago, but we're also far more stressed and unable to enjoy it. We say yes too often, therefore taking on tasks that we just can't handle, and we're constantly connected and communicating, finding it hard to hit that ideal work and home life balance. As a result, stress hits, we're confused, and we have no idea where to start. For example, Social media basically means you can talk to anyone at any time, anywhere. So if someone asks you a favor, you feel duty-bound to agree, whether you're too busy or not. We don't want to disappoint them, be it helping them with a school project or simply making a cake for someone's birthday. All of this adds up to far too many things on your internal to-do list. To-do lists can make you more stressed if you don't actually get to take anything off. Work is just the same. We no longer enter job roles clearly defined, as things are always shifting and changing. Information hits you constantly throughout the day, and there are so many people involved with the collaborative way of working that it's hard to focus on just one thing. David Allen has found an answer to all of that. Developing the idea of a system that cuts out the noise allows you to focus and concentrate and organize your tasks in a personalized way. This cuts down on adverse reactions to everything simply because we're stressed out and allows clarity and time for progress to be made. The following chapters will help you find out how you can be more productive and live a fulfilling life. Focusing does not simplify your life, it gives meaning and direction. David Allen, Chapter 2. Getting into the zone is the first step towards productivity. To manage your tasks effectively and systematically, you need to get into the zone. This is a state that empties your mind and allows you to make progress. You could compare this to a mindset used in karate called mind like water. When you're in this state, your mind is ready to accept anything, but it refuses to overthink, underreact, or even overreact to anything. Instead, it simply takes what comes its way, deals with it, and returns to a calm state. David Allen gives the example of throwing a stone into a body of water. The stone makes a splash, the water ripples a little, and then it goes back to a calm, almost motionless state. This is the zone, and that is how you need your mind to be. A calm mind allows you to process information more clearly. A cluttered mind will simply keep you stuck. Put simply, if you allow yourself to either under or over react to anything, it will quickly take control of your very being. By being more like the body of water we just mentioned, you're free to handle anything that comes your way. Part of getting into the zone is clearing your mind. Whenever you have several tasks tugging at your attention, it's impossible to think clearly. This is often down to commitments that have not yet been completed, messages that haven't been returned, half-done jobs, or responsibilities you've accepted that you know you don't have the time for. These are called open loops, and they destroy your productivity. The key to closing these loops is to collect information on everything you need to do and systematically work out a plan to complete it all at the correct time. This is your workflow, and David Allen explains how to organize your personalized workflow in the next section. Your ability to generate power is directly proportional to your ability to relax. David Allen To clear your mind and focus, you simply need to acknowledge the commitment, work out what action needs to be performed to complete it, and then plan a specific and timely slot to do it. By doing this, you're avoiding a backlog of tasks to build up in your mind, writing everything down, and regularly collecting your tasks into your workflow system. The result? More time to spend with loved ones and, of course, on yourself. A careful home and work-life balance are critical for health and happiness. Chapter 3. Take control of your workflow by introducing categories. 
If you want to control your workflow, you first need to clear your mind and collect all your tasks into one place. To do that, you need to establish your workflow. There are five main stages of creating your personalized workflow. Collect your tasks, i.e., write down the tasks you need to do or anything nagging away in your mind. Work out what these tasks are, what they mean, and what you need to do about them. Organize tasks one by one. Regularly review your system to ensure everything is done at the right time. Perform tasks according to the schedule you've set up. A workflow allows you to see the way forward for every specific task. Without this, you run the risk of procrastinating. When performing tasks, you have three options. Do, delegate, or defer. If you choose to do a task, it should be because it will take less than two minutes to complete. Defer means you decide on a particular time in the future to complete the task, not that you simply put it back into your in-tray and forget about it. Delegated tasks will take longer than two minutes and may be better performed by someone else with more time or specific skills to complete the job. Looking at a task and breaking it down into more minor points will help. Does this job need specific skills to complete it? How long will it take? How much work do you already have planned and do you have the time and energy at the moment to complete it to the best of your ability? How important is it time-wise? From there, you can make a sensible choice over whether to do it yourself, ask someone else to do it for you, or plan it for a later time, provided it's not an urgent task. The most experienced planner in the world is your brain. David Allen, Chapter 4 Take the time to establish your workflow properly to ensure efficiency. To get all your tasks out of your mind, onto paper, and organized into a flow, you need a space to do it and the tools to complete it. As mentioned before, David Allen suggests two days to establish your flow. By dedicating this amount of time, you're cutting down on stress because your mind will be totally clear. You also need somewhere to do all of this, which will be your working hub from this point onward. Identify that space before you begin. Investing the time you need to organize your workspace and system means a clearer road ahead. You then need to collect all the tools to get started. Suggestions for these are in trays, for example, trays that comfortably hold A4 sized paper. A supply of paper for making notes, pens and pencils, sticky notes, paper clips, a stapler and spare staples, rubber bands, labeling machine, or tape if you want to create your own, filing folders, a calendar, rubbish basket. Next, you need to organize your filing systems, and it's best to have just one organized in a way that makes sense to you. Most people use an alphabetical system, and it should be cleaned out at least once every year to ensure you're not holding on to things you don't need. You should also make sure that your filing system is never more than three quarters to capacity so you can easily find items. Your filing system should never be a dumping ground for things you don't know what to do with. Organize it and use it carefully. Did you know? The Pomodoro method is one of the most popular time management methods and helps you break large chunks of time up into smaller, more manageable periods. Chapter 5. The Art of Regular Check-Ins Keeps Your System Tidy It's no good organizing all your tasks into your system if you don't check your flow and continue to make progress regularly. Regular check-ins can be as big or small as you like and can even be a few minutes every day, just checking things over and making quick actions whenever necessary. David Allen suggests a weekly check-in as a review session on what needs to be done next. First, look at your calendar and your list of subsequent actions to give you information on what is next to complete. After that, Clear your mind of any other tasks or ideas and include those into your workflow, i.e. identifying what they are, what needs to be done, and incorporating them into the correct section. The basic idea is to review your tasks, move them to the next stage, delete what has been done, and process new tasks and ideas. 
Doing this continually will help clear your mind, allow tasks to be done on time, and effectively cut you free from the stress holding you back. Tasks should continually move through your established workflow. When something doesn't move, it needs to be addressed. One of the most common situations is that you have organized your workflow, you're happy, feeling uplifted, making progress, and then an urgent task comes your way and throws your flow out of whack. This is normal and happens to everyone on a regular basis. The key is not to panic. Anxiety can quickly set in when you're forced to focus on an urgent task and you start to think about all the things sitting in your in-tray not being done. For this exact reason, regular reviews are needed to readjust your workflow and amend timescales and actions that were not done because of the urgent task. You must focus on the urgent task. There's no way around it, but you should always remain calm and simply readjust. Urgent tasks will always pop up. Learn to embrace the challenge rather than allowing them to throw you off track. Chapter 6. Grab the benefits of being in the zone and make more time for yourself. Arranging your work into this particular type of flow means that nothing is forgotten. You're free to come up with new ideas and have spare time to spend with loved ones. And you're also making slow and steady progress through your projects, whatever they may be. This means you're also making progress with your one day or maybe lists, getting you closer to your goals in life. It's a good idea to keep a pen and paper close at hand so you can scribble things down when they pop into your mind. Being in the zone has many benefits, but you'll feel more positive and uplifted for sure. This happens not because you're taking on too much or making too many agreements to yourself, but because you have to break them because you just don't have the time or you simply procrastinated a bit too much. If you find yourself making too many agreements, for example, saying yes a little too often, you can say yes less, do what you've agreed to do, and enjoy the feeling of completion, or you can renegotiate the timeline. Remember, creating a workflow such as this doesn't mean your mind will ever be completely empty. Still, it does mean that you're firmly in the zone, therefore giving yourself more space mentally and emotionally. You'll feel more empowered, more confident, and more able to conquer your goals. Nobody is ever wholly organized and never worries about the tasks they need to do. Still, the difference between being in the zone and out of it is that you feel confident that you can overcome any challenge that arises. Commit to being organized from this point onward and notice your stress levels decline dramatically. Conclusion Learning to organize your workflow and cut out stress has countless benefits, but especially for your mental health above all else. You'll certainly feel freer, and you'll have more time to do the things you never had time for in the past. Life is too short to be stressed about your to-do list constantly, and it's simply about being systematic and organizing your workflow in a better way. The number one problem that holds most people back regarding time management is the temptation to either multitask or procrastinate, uh, perhaps even both. Neither will get you very far. Having a positive approach towards every task that comes your way means that you'll be able to organize it properly and get it done on time. Of course, that also means that you need to set some time aside to get your work situation on track. This is not time wasted. It will pay you back tenfold in a short amount of time. Then you'll notice that you not only have more time to spend with your loved ones, but you'll be more confident about your ability to get things done. A long to-do list can be a challenge in a good way. It doesn't have to be something that causes an undue amount of stress. Tasks can push you to work harder and learn new skills, but when you're snowed under with a ridiculous number of items on your to-do list, it's hard to see the woods for the trees. Getting things done effectively is more than just working all the time. It means being productive and enjoying the process at the same time. Try this. Empty your mind right now and write a list of all the things you need to do. How good does it feel to have less rattling around in your head? 
Set aside two days in your schedule and aim to establish your workflow. The intention is half of the deal. Make a commitment to yourself to establish a flow and be far more in control of your life.